Hello, and welcome to this presentation using NRP Power Analysis Power Mode. This presentation will take you step by step through how to make power mode measurements using the NRP Power Analysis application. This presentation assumes you're already familiar with the NRP Power Analysis option and how NRP power sensors are used with the SMA100B analog signal generator. If you're not familiar with these topics, it would be a good idea to watch the presentations using NRP Power Analysis and using NRP sensors with the SMA100B before continuing with this presentation. Many of the screens and functions used in power mode measurements are the same as those used in frequency mode, so the presentation using NRP Power Analysis Frequency Mode should also be watched before beginning this presentation. In the Frequency Mode presentation, you should have already learned how to start the application and how to get to the Configure Measurement screen. The only difference here is that this time we'll be making a Power Mode measurement. In this presentation, we'll use Power Mode to determine the gain curve and compression point of an amplifier. We start by specifying the minimum and maximum input powers and the number of steps between them. The NRP Power Analysis application causes the SMA to transmit a fixed frequency signal at each one of these power steps and to monitor the received power at the attached NRP sensor. The application will plot the results on a graph, allowing us to view and measure our amplifier parameters. Just as in frequency mode, we have to enter our measurement limits, but this time in terms of min and max powers. Here, minus 40 dBm and plus 15 dBm. These should be carefully chosen based on the DUT parameters. And as before, we also need to define the number of steps. Remember the number of steps and our timing mode, fast or normal, will largely determine the time it takes for us to complete a measurement. And as before, we next select the sensor to use. Options such as level offset or the use of S parameters might be useful when making power mode measurements. Remember that in power mode, we're varying the level, not the frequency. To configure the test signal frequency, use either the SMA frequency hard key or set the frequency in the main SMA100B GUI. We use start to begin our power mode measurement, which often will take several seconds or more before completing. We can determine the gain of an amplifier operating in its linear region by comparing the transmit power to the received power at a point in this region. Here, for an input power of minus 20 dBm, we have an output power of 0 dBm, meaning that our amplifier is providing about 20 dB of gain. A common amplifier measurement is finding the 1 dB compression point. This is the point where the output of the amplifier is 1 dB less than the expected or linear output power. This causes a curve or bend in our plot. We can use markers to determine this point but this approach could be very time-consuming and error-prone. A better solution is using a reference trace. Let's start with a high-level overview of this approach. We know that our amplifier has a 20 dB gain in the linear region, so we'll create a reference trace that corresponds to this ideal linear 20 dB gain. We then create a third curve, a so-called math trace, to calculate the difference between the ideal gain curve and the actual gain curve. Here, the red curve is just the green reference curve minus the yellow measured curve. Lastly, we can turn on a marker and simply read off the input power, where this difference equals 1 dB. In this example, the 1 dB compression point is minus 10.87 dBm. Now let's go back through this approach step by step. Trace 1 is our measured amplifier output, and we'll define trace 2 as our reference curve. Using Define Reference, we'll create a constant gain line of 20 dB by choosing a starting point of minus 40, minus 20, and an end point of plus 15, plus 35. We save this curve to ref, and then set trace2 indication to ref. Our results screen should now show both our measurement result as well as our manually created constant gain reference curve. We want to precisely determine the point where the measured value in trace 1 is 1 dB less than the ideal linear value in trace 2. To do this, we can use the mathematics function in the power analysis option. Trace 3 is defined as trace 2 minus trace 1, and after setting the indication on, we can see the difference between measured and ideal power shown here in red. By placing a marker on trace 3, we can easily read off the input power 
that corresponds to the 1 dB compression point. Let's end with a brief summary. Power mode measurements show the relationship between transmitted and received power, or the difference between the power that goes into a device and the power that comes out of that device. The most common application of these measurements is measuring amplifiers, although power mode can be used with other types of devices or systems as well. Configuring power mode measurements is very simple. We just need to provide the maximum and minimum power values and the step count. Remember that in this mode, measurements are made at a single frequency. The results of our measurement are graphically displayed, and the use of user-defined reference traces and math traces can be very helpful when making amplifier measurements. This concludes our presentation using NRP Power Analysis Power Mode. If you'd like to learn more about NRP Power Sensors or Power Analysis, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.